Hello and welcome to Fully Charged here in Germany at the Opel headquarters. Opel and Vauxhall, same company. There's big news today. This car, the artist formerly known as the Nova, remember they've sold over 13 and a half million Novas and Corsas in Europe over the years. We're gonna see the brand new Corsa and it's gonna be launched from the get-go as an EV. Let's go and have a look. This is Opel's HQ and it's right next to Frankfurt Airport, so there's a lot of planes about. And this is part of the design area where they bring a car out that isn't launched yet for us to look at it and get an idea of what it's like in the real world. And this, here's the new Corsa E. Now remember, Vauxhall and Opel are not part of General Motors anymore. They've been bought by PSA in 2017. So the underpinnings of this are similar to the Peugeot 208 and the, what the forthcoming Citroen DS3. So this is the heart of the new Corsa E. So can you talk to me about the orientation of this, Frank? Because obviously this is a, a PSA project. So before Vauxhall Opel joined the PSA group in... 1st of August 2017. 1st of August 2017. Group PSA. Presumably this, yeah. this drivetrain will have already been under development. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was under development. What you see here is more a physical mock-up, so it's not so good to explain the technology in all details, but it's yeah. good to explain the package system we have. Yeah. I think you have heard it. It's a multi-energy architecture or platform. Yeah. That means you produce on the same line, with the same frequency, no excuse, as it is an industrial com um, invention, internal combustion engine. Yeah. We also produce the electric version here. Yeah. And uh, the trick was to not touch the the interior compartment at all. We want to have the same space for the driver. Yeah. The driver will not even notice, besides some small ease on the car, that yeah. we have here an electric car. You see it here, but basically that's under the rear seats. Yes. The footroom is not touched, the same footroom as on a standard car, yeah. the same in the front, yeah. under the front seats. The tunnel is used for battery packs and power electronics. So in the end, uh, we don't have to hire the ground clearance or we don't have to lower or make a false floor for the, for the passenger uh, and, and driver. It's exactly the same packaging in all the cars. Mark, you're the head of design for, for Vauxhall? Yeah. Okay, so you decide how everything looks. We really had to do it very fast. We needed to turn this car around very quickly. Yeah. Uh, I've got to say, I, I picked my A-team to do this car because we had to do it yeah. in such a rapid time. And it's actually set new quality benchmarks in the group. So sometimes doing things quickly, very focused, yeah. really enables you to raise the bar significantly and I think this car does that. Can you tell me about the spec of these? So it's a 50 kilowatt hour pack, yeah. um, lithium iron obviously. Yeah. The what kind of cells and, and how many modules are we talking yeah, about? Basically, it's a pouch cell arrangement, like it's now standard on the automotive industry. There have been also these round cells we use from other electronics, yeah. but that's, uh, that's the industry standard. They're coming from CATL, which is one of the big suppliers worldwide for the cells. CATL, right. Yeah. The modules are 18. Every module faces 12 battery cells. Okay. And do you know why you guys went with um, the centre console? Because I know some EVs will go with a flat floor. Yeah completely and just use the space under the seats. And we basically used all the space available to make some battery size as big as possible on, okay. on this compact car. Yeah. And forget it's, it's a small car. Um, what we, I have to admit, yes, there are a couple of changes that the customer will not notice. Tell me, tell a me the changes. a different rear axle that has even slightly moved rearwards. Though if you look very close on a standard Corsa and the Corsa E, you see that the wheels are slightly, a couple of millimeters more rearward. We had to do a more compact rear axle both for package but also for the heavy load of the battery packs. So the axle itself is it's not the same part on the combustion engine Isn't it? and on the battery. So the rear axle yeah. is slightly different. Yeah. This car is built on the same production line as all the other courses, so it's not got special dispensation because it's EV. All of the high voltage is married from underneath in this big, this big cradle which just bolts up underneath the floor. Um, interior space is the same as the um, Piston uh, Brothers. The boot space is the same, or the usable boot space. I think at the front here, there's elements of the new Audi A1 in the shape of the headlights and this grille. 
and there's elements of Seat. I'm seeing a bit of Seat. So they are, I think, gunning for the, the kind of premium German look, which is no bad thing. Um, well, I mean, at the front, what we've tried to do, and in fact, the, the important thing about the car is it's the same footprint, essentially, as today's Corsa. Yeah. But what we've done is we've lowered it almost 50 millimeters. Yeah. It's slightly narrower and it's only fractionally longer, but the impression you get from the car is it looks a lot wider, it looks a lot, a wider. lot lower, a Squat. lot longer, yeah. much, much better proportions. And one of the keys to that is some of the visual tricks, if you like, that yeah. we played. At the front, we've really tried to emphasize the width, so like the grille is very landscape. Yeah. The headlamps themselves, uh, LED, full LED headlamps in this car. Yeah. Um, very slim. So between our typical wing signature light that is in all uh, voxels since the original Insignia in 2008, we've yeah. always done this wing signature light. And then one other important element that we have on all voxels, and it's a unique element, is this center crease. I like that. You know, and we've really emphasized it here. It's sharp. Know, bringing it up and putting a really, really sharp yeah. radius on. What that does is it sort of gives a focus to the to the brand the badge. emblem, and then the um, it does have a liquid cooling it's circuit. A liquid cooling circuit. Yeah. And then is it now basically also industrial standard? We have a chiller, so we use the air conditioning to cool the coolant down. Yeah. And the air conditioning itself, the performance is basically three times the performance of a standard cooling performance of a vehicle. So you have to overdimension the cooling system just for the battery. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. It's of course an electric compressor, not a belt-driven one like we have on, an, on a combustion engine. Yeah, yeah. But just to have an idea of it, because people are surprised, the cooling demand and the sizing of the air conditioning system is not any more size for the passengers yeah. or for the driver. It's, it's size for, for the battery, <laughs> exactly. But also heating. If, you, if you're in winter, you first have to heat up. So you can preheat the, the car? Um, yeah, both the cabin, but also the battery pack. Good. Because for, for charging, that's important, especially if you go to DC fast charging. You know, we have 100 kilowatt fast charging at this time. It's, yep. uh, it's basically double the performance of the previous electric car we did in the General Motors world. Yeah. And um, uh, you need to take care of the temperature of the battery. Always pampered as good as possible. Yeah. <laughs> Make yeah. sure nothing, nothing happens. Two stages of regen braking. Yeah. Uh, one is like normal engine braking. Mm -hmm. One is like an automatic transmission feeling. Yeah. Uh, and the other one is, it's not what some customers are, or some, some cars are doing. It's not this, um, what we call a one pedal mode where you can really go to stop. Really aggressive. We have yeah. not done this because, first of all, for legal reasons, you have to light your brake lights always if you go down from the pedal. Yes. And we don't believe that a customer who knows wants to have your the ease of life would appreciate that the cars behind always believe you're braking. Yeah. So we just went to the legal limit of higher recuperation. Yeah. That you have a nice recuperation, you make to see how the car is braking, but just as a limit that you don't have your braking lights uh, on, on yeah. and all the yeah. rear traffic doesn't believe you have to do yeah. a hard brake or something. This car has a bigger battery pack than the current Zoe, although there is a new Zoe on the way, and a bigger battery pack than the current Leaf which is probably why it's going to be a smidge, smidge more expensive than that, but you can kind of understand that. If this car can really do more than 200 miles in the real world, I think that's fantastic. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more creativity inside, but you've got to understand who this aims at. This is aimed at the sort of Vauxhall Corsa layman, the person that isn't really after a car that looks distinctly different. They want a Corsa a car that they've lived with for many years and they trust. And this one just happens to be electric. It's got an eight year warranty. You know, there's a lot of stuff to like about this car and there's a lot of convention for a lot of people to feel comfortable with. There is no front boot, by the way. It's just normal, same as a Leaf, same as a Golf. There's the aircon unit, the HVAC unit and the, bat and the, the motor. The motor's made by Continental, so front wheel drive only. Front motor, front wheel drive. This is coming out at the same time as the the conventional engine cars. Isn't yeah, it? and in fact, what we did was we tested this car with uh, the, our electric car customers or people who are buying or looking to purchase small electric cars in the future. Yeah. And actually, we asked them whether they wanted a highly differentiated car or something that was, you know, just a just, great looking just car. Regular. And honestly, the reaction was pretty universal. Was it? They just wanted a great looking car, and everyone agreed this was a great looking car and said, we're really just interested in the technology and, and delivering zero emissions, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. 
but in a package that is not quirky and different for a so different So you don't sake, want to stand so. out from the crowd unnecessarily? I think in this, maybe if you're in the higher, you know, bigger premium sections, maybe people yeah. are looking for that standout yeah. character. But in the mainstream, in the core market, yeah. those people didn't want to know. They just wanted a great technology car, yeah. great looking car, and we think that's what we've been able to deliver for them. So yeah, this is the same underpinnings as the 208 Peugeot, the E208. WLTP figure in normal mode is 205 miles. What they're saying by that is you can put it in eco mode and you can more than likely get more than 205 miles. It's a 26 and a half thousand pound car when it goes on sale in the UK. You can reserve this car from now. Um, early deliveries will be February 2020. They'll start building them, sort of Christmas 2019, right at the beginning. But I actually think it's a very mature car. It's a shame it's five door only. Uh, apparently industrial uh, trends are that nobody buys three doors anymore. So five door only it is, and that's not just Vauxhall, that's pretty much everybody. This won't come out before the E208. I'm almost certain it'll be cheaper than the E208. So the great thing is, is lots of Vauxhall dealers in the UK and they will all service high voltage. This has got an eight year warranty, um, 50 kilowatt hours. It'll charge rapid charge in half an hour to 80%, up to 100 kilowatts, so it's CCS. I love the fact that it's, it's not like blisteringly quick because it's not a sports car. 8.1 seconds to 62, um, but they're saying, crucially, not to 31 miles an hour is 2.8 seconds. So it's gonna be quick off the mark around towns and cities. You've got three driving modes. You've got sport mode, where you'll use all 136 PS, so 134 horsepower. Um, and then you've got normal mode, and then you've got eco mode. You've got two-stage regen. You've got aero wheels, and that's basically the only thing, and this little e-badge, and that little e-badge, which differentiates it from the regular other courses, which are coming out at exactly the same time. The main idea of the car is to just offer the same course that people love, now electric. Yes. It shouldn't look different, it shouldn't look strange, it shouldn't look, oh, that's an electric car. Yeah. We believe this is now the time to say electricity and BEV become normal. They yes. shouldn't have to be exotic, different looking. Some, com some competitors believe they should look very specific. We don't believe it. No. We want to have a nice car. It's familiar because yeah. Corsa is a huge yeah. selling car. When you're not using the 100 kilowatt CCS rapid charge capability, it's got its own 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charging system. From our wall box at home, it's typically a five hour full charge. Vauxhall have already started to talk to me about reusing their batteries when they come to the end of their life for home energy, so that's all coming. As soon as I can drive that car, I will. So subscribe if you haven't already to Fully Charge, and thank you very much for watching. I'm Johnny Smith, goodbye.